In this video, I'm going to explain how to compute present value, future value, rate, or PMT given relevant information using Excel. So let's start with an example. In this example, we have to compute present value given rate, number of period, payment, and future value. So let's make this example more intuitive. In this example, you are going to deposit $100 each year for the next six years. And at the end of six years, your parent is going to give you 500. So if these are the cash flows, how much is the present value of all this cash flow? So in the other videos, I have explained how to calculate present value, future value using uh, formulas, mathematical formulas. But here we are going to use Excel's built-in time value of money functions. So in Excel, we have present value function, PV function, which help us to find the present value of all these cash flows. But keep in mind, in this example, we have the same cash flow throughout the period, right? So if that is different, then Excel's present value function is not applicable. So to use Excel's present value function, see the payment, that payment should always be the same across time. So let's see how we can do this problem, right? We know the rate, we know the payment, we know the future value, and we know the number of period, which is n. In our case, n equals to 6. How can we do this in Excel? So here I have a small snip card from, uh, from Excel. You can see the rate is 10%, number of period is 6, payment is 100, future value is 500. You need to find the present value. How can you do that? So simply use this formula, present value, parenthesis, and now B1. B1 refers to rate. B2 refers to number of period. B3 refers to uh, payment. B4 refers to the future value. Now, if you input those values and hit enter, you get this number. Notice that you might get this number a negative. Yes, there was negative in my answer too, but I just put it positive and I explain that concept later. So it's so simple, we can use this Excel built-in uh, built function and find the present values. So now let's look at another example. In this example, we have to calculate future value given rate, number of period, payment, and future value. So here's an example again, and let's make a sense of that numbers, what it means here. Suppose you deposit 400 to your saving account at the end of current period and you keep on depositing 500 for the next 10 years, right? And the bank is giving you 7.5% interest rate. How much will that be all at the end of year 10, right? So Excel has a very nice future value function with these argument, rate, number, of period, payment, and present value. We can use Excel's this function and find the future value. Let's see how we can do. So again, uh, in Excel, we can write rate 7.5%, right? Then after number of period is 10, payment is 500, and your present value, the money that you have at uh, today or at the end of the current period is 400. So how much is the future value then? So simply future value, and parenthesis B1 again refers to rate B2. You can see this all link it, right? Once you hit the enter, you are going to get 7897.96, which is the future value. So again, you might see negative, and I still haven't explained this, but I'm going to explain in the next two videos uh, how we take care of that negative and positive value. But here I'm just focusing on how you input these different numbers to use Excel's built-in function. So let's look at another example. And here, in this example, you have to calculate rate given number of period, 
payment, uh, present value, and future value. And here's an example. And again, let's let's try to uh, make this example more uh, practical. So suppose that you want to have ten thousand in your bank account at the end of year twelve, and you have only four hundred in your bank account this year, but you plan to deposit five hundred for the next. 12 years so how much should the interest rate be so that you will have 10,000 at the end of year 12 right so to find this kind of problem here you need to find the rate given all other information right so excel has a nice function called rate you can use excel's rate function given all other input variables right you can easily use it and Notice here, I have written payment negative and future uh, present value negative, whereas the future value positive. How do you decide which value has to be positive and which has to be negative? And I have uh, thought about it, and I think one technique works pretty much all the time. That is, think of this cash flow as an inflow versus outflow if the money is coming to you this is inflow and if the money is going away from you that's outflow so whenever there is an outflow of money we will always consider as a negative value and whenever money is coming to you which is inflow of money we'll consider this as a positive value so in this example you want ten thousand coming to you at the end of year two right so it's coming to you that's why I am assuming this is positive. But to have that 10,000 coming to you, you must deposit 400 this year, or you already have it, and you have to deposit 500 for the next 12 years, right? So these all the cash flows are all outflows. That's why it's negative. So keep this in mind. If the money is coming to you, it's positive. If money is going away from you, it's negative. So how you would you do this in Excel? Here is the example. So we need to find rate, right? Everything else is given. Number of period is given. Payment is given. And present value is given. Future value is given. How would you find the rate then? Meaning, what rate of interest should the bank provide you so that you will have 10,000 given that you already have 400 in your account and you plan to deposit 500 for the next 12 years that interest rate is 7.25 percent make sense right okay let's move on to the next example and in this example again you have to find number of period given rate payment present value and future value and here is a timeline for this problem Let's also try to make sense of the numbers here. So let's assume that you have 100 in your saving account this year and in bank is giving you 2% interest rate and you want to have 500 in your saving account. How long should you wait? Right? So think that you have 100 in your bank account and that account pays you only 2%, but you want to grow that money to 500. How long should you wait? Interesting example, right? So, here we have to find number of periods, meaning how many periods, how many years you have to wait, right? So, Excel has this per function, and per function has uh, arguments or input variable as a rate, payment, present value, future value. Right, so we can use this again. Look at here. I have a negative present value and positive future value. The reason is you want to have 500 coming to you, right? You want to get 500 in the future. So, to have that 500 coming uh, to you in the future, you must give up some money today. You have to deposit some money, right? So, that's why the money this 100 is going away from you. And you have to wait certain number of years and then the 500 is going to come back to you 
That's why I have here negative and positive value. So, how would you do this in Excel? Here is an example. So, rate 2%. Number of period you have to find. And payment. Uh, that payment refers to if there is any payment in between this uh, different time intervals. And for our case, there's no payment. So, we assume this is zero. And how much do you have in your bank account today? Just 100, right? And how much do you want to have in the future? It's 500. So how would you calculate? Then Excel function, look at this, and per and B1 refers to rate again, and B3 refers to the payment, and so and so forth. If you put these numbers and hit enter, then you are going to get 81.274. What does this mean? This means if you have just $100 today or this year, and you want to grow that $100 to $500 and the bank is giving you only 2%, how long should you wait? Maybe too long, right? 81.27 years. This is a lot of years and that mainly because the bank is not paying you enough interest rate for that 100 to be 500 sooner. Right? Make sense? Okay. When you are using Excel for time bill of money function problems, sometimes it's confusing to use rate and number of period if the interest rate is compounded more than once in a year. So what I'm trying to explain here is if the interest rate is compounded more than once a year, how would you adjust to use the rate and number of period function in Excel? So remember in Excel, the rate and the number of period, they are all periodic in the sense that what does mean periodic rate? Periodic rate basically means APR, annual percentage rate over number of times the interest is compounded per year. So if the APR is 15%, and interest is compounded quarterly, then periodic rate would be 15 over 4. And how do you take care of the number of periods? The number of period in Excel is always equals to number of times the interest is compounded per year times M, right? So, for example, in the same example, if the interest is compounded quarterly, then the number of times interest will will be 4, and if it is for 5 years, then it will be 4 into 5 equals to 20. For example, I have given you some examples here. So let's say that compounding is annual, right? So if the compounding is annual, the rate and APR, no adjustment needed, and number of period equals to the number N, so no adjustment needed. So, so far, the example we have discussed today, all we consider that annual interest compounding, meaning only uh, interest is compounded only once a year. But what if the interest is compounded more than once? For example, monthly. If the interest is compounded monthly, then the rate in Excel function is equals to APR over 12. And number of period is going to be N into 12. What if the interest is compounded daily? If the interest is compounded daily, then total number of time the interest compound per year is 365, right? That's why the rate is going to be APR over 365. The number of period would be N into 365. So let's see an example for that concept here. And in this example, I'm trying to explain that. Suppose you have 500 in your saving account this year and the bank is paying you 14.75%. You wish for that, right? Okay, let's <laughs> let's assume that. The interest being paid to you is 14.75% and you have 500 in the bank account. How much will that be at the end of year five if the interest is compounded monthly? So in this case, what is rate? So the rate is See, it's 14.75, right? Over how often the interest is compounded? It's monthly, that means 12 times a year. 
then rate that you are going to use in Excel is going to be uh, uh, 14.75 over 12. And what would be the N for that? N P year, number of period, that is going to be have five years, but interest is compounded monthly. So number of period would be uh, 12 into 5, that equals to 6. So present value is there, future value there. There is no payment, so we assume that payment is zero. So with this information, now you can use Excel and calculate the future value. For example, that's what I have just done here, and we have uh, we have uh, number of compounding period, we have APR, and now number of years there. Rate simply B2, which means APR over B1 number of periods. So you have 1.23% rate, number of period is 60, payment is zero, and the present value is five, and future value. You can use this function and calculate the future value. I hope this helps you to use Excel for solving time and uh, time value of money problems. Thank you.